Hey guys, Coach Matt here. Just wanted to drop in and say thank you for listening. Uh, you're our family. We, we appreciate you guys jumping in every week. This week we have co-founder of Better at Beach, uh, Brandon Joyner, jumping in with us. And one thing that Brandon Joyner is really good at is setting a tone for practice. Uh, whether he's playing or coaching, he does so well at creating a fun learning environment. Uh, that stays positive and in the and in the headspace that the players need to be in that are also in the practice with him. Uh, and so we're going to be chatting through that a little bit. Uh, and I hope you guys gain some knowledge from this that you can take to your teams as a coach or as a player that is a leader on a team uh, that you can take to your team and, and just create a positive, fun environment to make everybody around you better. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, but Brandon, just kind of give a rundown of who you are and um, what you've done in your life, the accolades, and uh, also the coaching that you've done in your life and where you're at now, the fun adventures now. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I'm Brandon Joyner. I'm one of the co-founders of Better at Beach. Um, and yeah, I think uh, as far as my kind of resume of, of volleyball. It's, it's been, it's been a while. Uh, I started playing when I was in high school. I uh, got the chance to go play D one at George Mason. That's where Mark and I met. Um, and I played indoor volleyball for five years at Mason coached for a little bit, went overseas and played professionally for, uh, I think three seasons. Um, yeah. And then I started switching to the beach. Um, I played, on various professional tours for the last eight to 10 years. Um, And now I'm kind of switching to be a little bit more coach dependent. Um, I am kind of uh, taking a, so I'm calling it a soft retirement from, from playing. Um, We'll see what happens as far as if, if I hop back out there and play anything Um, it'll just be for fun and, kind of compete just with like good buddies. Um, but yeah, I think right now I'm, I'm in the middle of moving to putting my energy into more of the coaching realm. So really focusing on developing with better at beach, developing our coaching system um, with how we coach other coaches and also uh, just getting out there more and, and actually working with people again. Uh, it's, it's kind of crazy how much time, you know this, but how much time and energy playing takes out of you, you know, because we've, we've always wanted to create a product where we're able to give people as much and useful information as we possibly can, um, give them the feedback, give them the ideas, but also try to lead them in a direction where they can get better on their own, um, with a little bit of help from us. And, now I'm kind of just diving full into that and kind of making myself available to uh, the the coaching world. So I think if I'm looking ahead, uh, especially within next year, instead of competing, I I hope to be on a sideline um, in a box for a team. Um, maybe one on the men's side, one on the women's side. That would be kind of ideal for me. Um, but yeah, other than that, just trying to see what we can do as far as now that I do have all this, I am assuming I'll have more free time that I'm not particularly spending on training and the whole volleyball, staying in volleyball shape. Um, I'll have a little bit more time to give back. So yeah, it's oh, that's, exciting. That's cool. And you also just picked up running too, right? Yeah, I, I know for a fact, just knowing who I am, um, I need something to push me forward something that kind of gets me to get out of bed and um i've been lifting hard for the last 20 years josh so (laughs) work working out is not something that is like particular i i'm still working out a lot but yeah i'm thinking about getting into uh like maybe the triathlon world and and dabbling with that um yeah it's been kind of fun i recently i i don't have any like scheduled events or anything like that but um, since I, the last real tournament I played was Manhattan, um, which was like middle of August. And ever since then, I've been kind of just testing my body, um, trying to see how I react to long distance running, swimming, biking, 
Um, and oddly enough, my body loves it. Um, so it's, it's been a really cool switch up. Uh, it's definitely a lot of new, uh, challenges and kind of just dealing with a different sport completely, but it's, it's been fun. I'm looking forward to it. Wow. That's fun. I can, I can help you with the swimming part. Oh, thank you. Always <laughs> looking for help. Yeah. We all need to learn how to swim a little better. Um, <laughs> yeah. 20, 24 years of coaching swimming. I might be able to help you out a little bit. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, Brandon, I was just thinking as we were going into today, um, I, I, I vividly remember a training session that I had with you, uh, with Megan, coach Megan Bergdorf in uh, California. And I remember mm -hmm. leaving that practice. Like that was so fun. Like, I don't know what it was, but it was just so much fun. And I think of a lot of it went back to you that day and just your morale and, and just keeping it high. And just chatting with you yesterday and hearing you talk about how you wanted to um, talk a little bit about how to keep that energy high in a good, positive environment. I thought back to you as a player in that moment and how you did that as a player. And so I'm excited to hear about like the ways that you do that as a coach as well. Uh, and so if you want to just kind of pop that can open uh i'd love to hear you kind of start that conversation with josh here um what does it look like to create such a strong and fun and exciting learning environment for you as a coach you know i i think one of the things that i've realized over the over the past especially six years since we've been running better at beach is the amount of people that i've gotten to work with um and the amount of people I've gotten access to playing with it is the common, the common feeling as far as success goes, is that there's a lot of positivity surrounding it. Um, you know, I know for me, um, I kind of had two instances where I felt this one was as a player. Right. And, um, I, I got really lucky when I first moved out to California, I was still kind of, I was having really good finishes, but I wasn't, I wasn't blowing anybody's mind. You know, I was, I was having to grind through every single point, every single match that I played in. Um, I think if I won, people were surprised. If I lost, people were surprised. I was like kind of in that middle realm of like, people didn't know which brand and they were going to get, you know, and I, I got lucky enough to get pushed with a Mark had a lot of really good connections. So once I came out here and I started training with Mark a lot, we would have these really, really good practices. Um, and then I also got kind of added into a really, really fun group with, um, like Eric Baranek, Andy Banesh, Casey Patterson, Troy, uh, Rosie, when he was still playing, um, some of these names are, are starting to retire. So it's kind of making me feel a little bit older as well. But, um, I, I had a moment where. I think Mark said something and, and another coach said something where I, I was going into practice and I was so intense that I wasn't actually getting better. Um, and I think what was happening is I was showing up and I was so results driven, like every single, if I lost, if I lost a point, I took it so personally. And as the practice went on, like my energy level and my ability to just communicate in general, just almost completely went away. And uh, one of the things that was said to me was like, make sure if at, if nothing else, you're making the training experience enjoyable for everybody that's involved, you know? And so I think that was something that kind of really resonated with me um, because one, the coach was like, you're a great player you know how to make these plays, but one way that you can impact the practice is by like keeping everybody relaxed, you know, work hard, but celebrate the spell, celebrate the wins, get loud, cheer people on, do whatever you can. And so I kind of just like fell into that role at these practices where, yeah, I was competing. I was, I was doing a good job and I, I was at a very similar level to these guys, 
but what made them wanting me to come back was my ability to make people smile to me enjoying the process myself of like of getting better and if it didn't work out at least i knew i was working on something and as i was able to kind of release this pressure of having to win every single point and like show people at practice how good i was um and instead just kind of getting out and going going through the reps that i needed to having the focus that i needed to but then also just truly enjoying the experience um i noticed that within like two or three months of me training with that group i went from somebody that i didn't really feel like i belonged to somebody that it kind of revived my career a little bit um to the point where like when 2020 came around i was actually thinking about retiring then I was thinking about like stopping playing just that was right when our right when better at beach kind of took off and things were going really well and i was like oh this is cool like maybe i'll just put all my energy into this and then i kind of refound that joy and it was crazy how how quickly i saw the improvements and it, it was all it was was a change of mindset of like instead of looking and being as serious as i was I was able to enjoy it, enjoy the process. Going to practice wasn't like a chore anymore, or I wasn't like nervous to compete. It was more just like, oh, cool. I get to go hang out with like some really fun people um, and then get better along the way. And so that was a really cool thing for me to experience as a player. And then as a coach, I think that's something that we have really tried to show at our at our practices, at our camps, um, three, seven days, whatever it is, um, is just enjoying the process. You know, I think, especially at our camps, it can be a little tricky because it's, it almost becomes an overload of information. You know, like we, when we, whenever we go to these camps, we, we 100% want to make people better. You know, like that's our goal. And the way that we make people better is, you know, um, stealing the line out of DJ's book, Marine, is uh, he says, like, coaching is like um, making pasta or spaghetti. I don't remember what he what he calls it, but like pretty much you just like throw all the pasta on the wall and like hope that some of it sticks, <laughs> you know. And and so like as coaches, we can get really, really involved where we're giving constant feedback to these players and it's not we're not doing it in a sense to overwhelm them we're doing it in a sense of like uh maybe that last word didn't stick maybe the next one will um kind of idea but we also have to remember that it's also our job as as coaches to keep that joy around right to to make sure that the learning experience is fun so like there's a way that you could deliver the same feedback and in one instance it can promote extreme growth and comfortability and then in another way it can almost come off as tense and judgmental you know and i and i think that we we always want to there and there's a time for both like i'm i'm it's kind of interesting because we have to balance this idea as, as much as we can because, and it also depends on the player, right? Some players, like maybe Josh shows up to practice and he's used to performing at a really high level, but I kind of need to get him locked in real quick. That might be one where, especially if I know Josh and I know how he, if he can handle a situation, maybe I'm a little bit tougher on him, you know, but then once I get them locked in, then I have to go back to finding that joy and that enjoyment process. You know, maybe Matt, maybe you're a little bit more sensitive. Maybe you're a guy that like, if I'm mean to you, especially at the beginning of practice, maybe you shut off for the rest of practice. And now I'm, you're just kind of there. Right. And you kind of, we not only did you fall victim to that kind of tough mentality but now you're outside of your atmosphere of being able to learn you know so for you it might be joyfully bringing you along and like making some quick jokes lightening the mood using some analogies that are like kind of silly um 
whatever it is. But yeah, I think it is important for every coach, um, regardless of how you have to do it or what order you have to do it in. Um, but making sure that a majority of your practice is full of joy and full of like just wanting people to be there. I think that's huge. Um, yeah, because we, I mean, I came from the teaching world and I think it's a lot easier for teachers to realize this because kids hate school. You know, it's like, I, I, well, there are a couple kids that don't hate school, right? They like have really bought into this idea of like going to school, getting good grades, and they really do understand the idea of learning. Um, I wasn't one of them, <laughs> you know, I, I was one of, I was one of those kids that like, I had to be there because all of my teachers knew my parents and <laughs> like I had to go, you know, but I was, I was lucky enough to where I had teachers that were so cool that it kept me coming back. Right. And so I think like, that's a really big thing for teachers, especially is because no matter a, no matter what age of student you're teaching, yes, you're trying to teach them information. The information is important, but really what you're trying to do is you're trying to instill this idea in someone's mind that showing up and learning is the most important piece of that. And the most, and the easiest way to get people to do that is by either making them have as much fun as they possibly can or tricking them into thinking that they're having fun. Um, and so I think that that balance is something that's pretty important. Nice. Yeah, I love that. <clears throat> and I can kind of relate to that about the whole like going to school thing. Um, and, and so for me, I can relate in kind of the church world. My, my parents were, youth, my, my dad is a youth pastor and but a lot of times with pastor kids, it's this feeling of they feel forced to go to church. Mm -hmm. And whereas for me, I never felt forced. I just always wanted, I was curious. I always wanted to know what my parents had that I didn't. And I like just kept going mm -hmm. and kept showing up. And, and so I think that's very relatable to like a practice. Like I never want a player and it sounds like you're in the same headspace you never want a player that you're coaching to show up feeling forced to practice in any way like you want to just maybe lay out a platter and be like this is what it has to offer but you're not being forced to do this like you like if you enjoy it then you're going to get the most out of it and it sounds like you do that really well um and it sounds like you encourage them <clears> to <throat> more so about uh the process rather than the results. And I think that's a, I, I wanted to echo that from you. Of, like, it's so much more about the process rather than the results. Like if I went to church and they were like, it must be this, it must be that, it must be this, it must be that. Then the whole results, that's gonna kind of push me away, right? Whereas mm -hmm. it's more about the process of, of like, this is what it looks like. This is what a good training session looks like. It's fun, it's exciting. Uh, enjoy the process of learning these new skills. Uh, it's a it's a cool, it sounds like a really awesome learning environment. Um, and so I'm going to give you a scenario and you just tell me, like, I, I want to know how quickly, if you show up to this morning coaching in Hermosa Beach, I'm sure you already knew a lot of those people and the way they like to be coached. Um, but say you show up and there is 10 new people on your court that you have never coached. What are some ways that you figure out as fast as possible the way that player, each of those players need to be coached to set them up well? You know, I think the, I think the first thing is not worrying about the players too quickly. You know, I think one thing that you have to do is you have to set the environment that you want players to reflect, mm. you know? So like one of the first things that I did this morning when I showed up to the beach was I, I went around and I said, I said, hi, I said just uh -huh. little hellos to every single player. I said a little joke, you know, I'm, I'm laughing. I'm, I'm like kind of moving around lightly. You know, I'm talking to as many of them as I can do what we talk about. doesn't really matter. Right. But more than likely, I'm just trying to kind of relieve any stress that is related to anything outside you know, and kind of warm them up to that environment that they're going to experience on the sand, you know, and then 
once we do that, then you can start to understand who people are, right? Um, and I think it's like reading people's en energy. <clears throat> a lot of the times that you can see it on people's faces, um, whether they're super serious or if they're like just there to like have fun and kind of they still want to get better, but it's a very lighthearted feeling. Um, that's where it's it's really important. And I think it start like it doesn't change the way you run your practice. You know, like I always one of the things that I'll do a lot, especially when we do our camps, is encourage people to be good partners. You know, like just because and, and I always I say it in a way because like, hey, use this to get out of your own head a little bit and like just say good job to somebody. You know, it's crazy how just congratulating somebody on completing a skill that they're trying to complete, how much of an impact that can have on your personal energy as well. Um, there's a really good book that I read uh, a couple years ago called Celestine Prophecy. And it's it's a very deep book as far as like um, transcripts and a bunch of things uh, that kind of tote on energy and religion and everything like that. But one of the areas that they talk about a lot is figuring out ways to use energy in your favor, you know? And I think there's a couple of ways that we, we can do this. And like in a perfect world, energy is bouncing between people, right? So like when you and I are talking right now, Matt, if you, right now I'm controlling a lot of this conversation and you're not a hundred percent sure when you can step in and say something because you're not a hundred percent sure when my thought process is done, right? right? So right now what's happening is I'm the one pushing out a lot of information and you guys are just receiving it, whether or not you want to or not. Right. right. In a co in a coaching world, what we have to do is we, we have to make it a balance between if you need to hear something, sure. It's going to be from me, but in a perfect world, if there's going to be a lot of um, like understanding on your part, then there needs to be some form of cycle where we're bouncing this energy back and forth with between one another. And a lot of the times that happens with just asking, right? Asking questions. How did, how did you feel on that? Um, did you, or celebrating something really, really good, you know, like today I, I did, it was a private lesson. So it ended up just being one guy, but I showed up at the end of, of class and I like stopped the class and I gave them a little focus. And then for the next couple of minutes, like I was just focusing on celebrating that focus. So if somebody did it right, I pulled them to the side and I was like, Hey, awesome job. What did you feel? Like how, how did, and then kind of walk them through it. And so now they're taking part of that kind of bouncing of energy, which is pretty cool. Um, and I think it just makes it more fun. You know, I think one of the things that, we've done really well with better at beach is created a uniform like way of coaching information right we know exactly what information we want for everybody to receive by the end of camp but we still have to think about ways that we can kind of adjust that and work with people so that that understanding is like optimized hmm. does that make sense and we have to figure out a way to like the way I coach you, the way I coach Josh, the way I coach Maureen. Um, I'm not sure who else is on this call, but um, like, it's all going to be different, you know? And I, I think that that's, I think that's like the magic of, of being a coach is finding that good balance. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. The pasta doesn't change. It's the sauce that changed, you know, <laughs> or the stickiness of the wall. <laughs> that's all time too. <laughs> that's a valid point yeah um no that that definitely makes sense and and um i love that in the beginning you I mean, we talk a lot about especially in setting we talk about like good misses you know uh where it's like airing to the correct hitting arm uh and i love that you missed to the side of being encouraging and uplifting and like creating that connection before the practice even started uh i think that's a very valuable thing uh, maybe that's just me as a player and i'm biased of i want to feel that my coaches care like i want to mm -hmm. feel 
they're wanting to be a part of my life more than just volleyball or back in the day, whenever I played soccer, I wanted to feel that they wanted to know me outside of soccer. And so I love that you missed to that side rather than erring to the side of, Hey, this is going to be an intense practice. Y'all better get ready, you know, and, and just like completely putting those guards up and getting tense and nervous. Uh, I think that's what that causes players to do is there's a difference between like excitement and nerves, you know, if someone's excited to take a class with a coach, they're going to be loose and ready and fun. Whereas as soon as they get that feeling of this coach is intimidating, everything gets tight and nervous. Um, and so that's a fun way to kind of tear down that wall. Um, mm -hmm. So kind of feeding into this next, next question. But real quick, Matt, before yes. we keep going, I think, I think, uh, it all comes down to trust, you know, like, especially uh, I would assume most of the coaches in this group work with kids and especially with kids, there has to be this form of, okay, I trust this person, you know, and as long as you develop that idea of trust, like, and a, a lot of it comes back to respect, you know, it, one of the biggest things that kind of blows my mind is we we all carry these built-in stereotypes we try we're trying to get rid of them as best we can but they're still around and the one the way that i know this is because a lot of times if i tell people i used to be a teacher and then i tell they're like oh what grade did you teach and i say eighth grade the reaction every single time is the same oh my gosh like that age group that <laughs> which is like is there a reason? Maybe, you know, like there, I'm not saying that kids that age can't be a specific way, but I think that that was one of the big things that made me a good teacher and all the people that I was like really trying to mimic as a teacher, that the characteristic that they had the most was that they respected their kids. Hmm. You know, like I, whenever I was a teacher, I treated them like adults. I I had a lot of respect for them. And the only time I really raised my voice or did anything administrative was if that line of trust was broken. And so I think like, especially for kids, you have to show them that you respect them. If you do respect them, that will open up this idea of a trustworthy relationship right it's crazy how how many kids are affected by that because they don't know if they can truly trust somebody and then now we're trying to get them to do things and we're trying to like change ways that they act change ways that they move um, change the way that they play the sport but there's still not this idea of like all right do i really trust this person or not you know, I think that building up that trust and that respect, and it ha not just kids, it's adults as well. Adults are usually a little bit easier because they are showing up on their own, right? Like adults are signing up for these things. They're showing up knowing that they want to learn. So there's already a commonality. Um, but with kids, we, we have to start a little bit more surface level get that understanding, get that trust, get that respect. And then that's when you'll start to see like the improvement kind of escalate pretty quickly. Yeah. I love that. Building the trust. Is there any other ways that you, um, but apart from like the beginning of practice where you just go around and greet everyone and say, hi, apart from volleyball, like, is there any other ways that you like to tangibly do that and build that trust with your players? I mean, I think that that's where, finding anything to celebrate you know what mm -hmm. they need to realize that you're on their team you know and so like i volleyball is a really tough sport in this in the sense because so many things have to go right for a play to look good right but there are also so many little things that we can do correctly but mess up one thing and then all of a sudden it seems like a failed rep but in the end it was just one failed movement Right. And so I think it's like, especially at the beginning, when you're first starting to work with people, you need to point out the areas of concern or the areas that are that are kind of 
bothering somebody or like messing up their touch. But it's also really important to point out everything that they're doing well. You know, like if if I'm passing a ball and my shape looks really good, my footwork looks perfect, my platform is straight, but I'm but all of a sudden I miss my angle and that changes where the ball goes, right? As a coach, I could say, hey, get your angle right. Or I could say, hey, that was an awesome rep. Your your everything was perfect. Your shape, your footwork, your platform. The only thing we missed was the angle. So let's do the exact same thing. Everything else was perfect. Except now let's put a little bit more emphasis on the on the angle. You know, and I think if you can if you can coach it's the same exact coaching, right? You're still f- trying to fix that one problem area, but you've done it in a way now that makes this person feel good, right? They're like, Oh, I, I did all those things. Right. That's, that's a cool feeling. And now it, it makes like learning how to pass, which is a tough skill. Like there, and there's so many different things with everything, every single skill that we work on, but it allows, it allows them to find those like kind of small wins. And as long as you celebrate them with them, then that's, that's how you build that trust up too. Yeah. And it is so interesting to see, how many people as players don't want to hear that like like there's mm-hmm. some people who are like don't beat around the bush with me just tell me you know and i'm like and that's okay and that's okay yeah. yeah right like if people want tough love that's fine but they also need to realize everything that they did well because right. there are so many steps that like one thing that happens a lot at, at especially at our camps is you'll see and it's all body language right like they'll make a pass that doesn't go where they want and all of a sudden their head drops their energy drops they might say a bad word and like get upset with themselves and i'll ask them like hey why are you so upset and they're like well that was a bad pass i'm like okay well do you do you realize that you did this right this right and this right and they're like oh actually no i didn't realize that and so it's like you can be tough on yourself, but you also need to realize what did you do right? Because the next time you go back to the drawing board and you're performing that same skill, you still need to do all those other things right, except now we're going to try to add those things on top. Nothing nothing in the sport of beach volleyball is a complete failure or a complete success. You know, it's like fi- trying to find this really, really solid percentage of I did pretty much everything really well. And that's usually if you're able to do that, then the touch, it, it resembles that, you know, but if you start missing out on some of these things, then you might get lucky. It might just be a bad play. Um, but yeah, realizing it's okay if they want tough love, that's fine. I'm, I can hand it. I can hand it out. <laughs> um, the positive, trust me, the positivity is not, the reason I'm talking about it is because it's still something that um, I'm working through. You know, I think it's something that we all have to work on. If you care about something enough, um, then sometimes it can come out quick. It can come out in a way that is misread or misunderstood, or maybe your your patience kind of ran a little thin. But making people realize that they they have done stuff right is really important, whether they want the tough love or not. Yeah, and, and as a player too, I, I have to confess, I had a moment where I was wearing a shirt that Seahawk gave me from Hawaii, and I had been missing serves over and over again, and thankfully she's asleep, so she doesn't know I'm talking about this right <laughs> now, but, but I, I missed a serve in a crunch time, and I just like ripped it from the neck down, and like, you guys know me, that's not me, but like, right. that was a moment where the thing that I cared about most or like one of the things I care about most in my life just didn't go well for me. And, and so like, I let it overflow and it is easy to like, let those kind of moments shine and like flow through, uh, accidentally. And so I think this is something that, like you said, it's just, we care so much about it and we want to like convey that to our players too, as coaches. Um, and it's hard to find that balance of, celebrate often but also like give them the feedback that they need to make their game climb and get better 
Um, and I, I love, love, love just celebrating often. So I think I kind of err too far to that side sometimes of like celebrating often, but then making sure that I'm still getting back on the things that maybe they need to tweak a little bit. Um, I, I feel like I personally struggle with the, as a coach, celebrating too often. Um, so how do you find that balance of like, is there like a ratio? I know Nolan, Nolan got in here and he shared a ratio that he likes to think about, like a, like 10 to 12 compliments to one feedback of like, Hey, this is what you need to do better. So what, how do you view that of like finding the balance of celebrate often, but then also set the tone in some ways? I think I, I kind of think about it in a form of time frame. I don't know the answer to this, to be honest. Okay. Um, but just kind of going off what, like my lesson that I did this morning, there's a lot of compliments at the beginning, right? Because at the beginning of, of a teaching, you you want, people don't know the final outcome of what you're really trying to get them to do. Right. So it's a lot of experimenting. Um, and with experimenting, they're going, they're experimenting, doing something completely different than what they've done. Even if it's a set that they, if they've been playing volleyball for 10 years, but they're trying to learn how to handset and you're trying to get them to do it a different way, it's still the first time that they're doing that. And so I think the important part is like at the beginning, you're trying to, that's when you're throwing the pasta at the wall. Right. And, and you're trying to get those things to stick, but it, it doesn't always happen right away, you know? And so at the beginning, I think it's a little bit more compliment driven because you're just trying to get them to feel what it feels like to do what you're trying to get them to do. And so it takes a lot of celebrating, right? It takes a lot of, yes, that's what we're looking for. I like how you did this. I like how you did that. Um, you can use that time that time to point out little errors of kind of wrong technique or whatever you want. Hey, you did this this time instead of this. This is what I'm trying to get you to. Um, but once once you kind of go through this idea, this process of um, five ten minutes of getting them to completely understand what you're trying to get them to do. And it's up to you as a coach to make them realize that as quick as possible, whether it's talking them through it, whether it's walk, making them do it, whether it's you showing them. Um, I would say within those first five minutes, you've done all of those things. You've shown them what you want it to look like. You've broken down the skill into multiple points. Um, you've had them do it to where they're starting to feel the muscle memory a little bit. And then it becomes, once they have that understanding, that's when you can start to play around with the pressure. I need you to hold your feet after this set. There's no other option, right? So like, that's when you can start to, start to get a little bit tougher, you know? But I think it's like, what we do as far as, especially in the world of volleyball, what we see is that we see they are, they are here. We want them to get to here. And the way that we feel comfortable as players is we slowly make these changes. Whereas if we keep making these cha these small little changes, we're still going to get to that final product. It's just going to take us forever. You know, and so I think you have to put yourself in the driver's seat as a coach to say, okay, I can see these little changes happening. How do I get them to take a big jump? And a lot of the times that comes down to the challenges, right? Where let's say with setting, I have somebody who has like really wobbly footwork and they're not getting to a strong position when they're setting. I'll say, all right, hey, make sure you're getting your make sure you're getting your footwork right make sure you're finishing off foot net foot set right and then after he does that for five minutes and i haven't seen a change i'll i'll say every time he holds his every time he's able to hold his footwork i'll say hey that was it that's what we're looking for that was the best rep i've seen let's remember that one after about five minutes of that if he's still making the same error then i'll say hey the next five i don't even care what the set looks like 
I need you to hold your finish of your feet. I need your feet to feel strong. I don't care if it's a double. I don't care what it is, but I'm going to give him something that he has to accomplish. And it's also something small. So I'm not saying, hey, these next five have to be perfect sets. That's not, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for, hey, these next five feet have to be perfect, right? We do five. He does five with the perfect feet. I'm like, cool. All right, now let's get back. Now we get back to kind of releasing him to where that's not the main focus. But now I can always come back to that. Hmm. I can be like, hey, remember, we just spent five reps making sure that we're holding our feet. Now we're back to just normal setting and, and you look unbalanced again. So let's, mm -hmm. let's get back to that feet focus and then let's keep adding on on top. And so I think it's like, for me, it, it's what can I do and how can I say it to just make that meter move as quick as possible. And we see that for us, it's always big adjustments, right? Like if I'm saying don't bend your elbows, then I want to see you walking around a court like a, a robot or a soldier for the next 10 minutes to a point where I'm like, Hey, good job. Not bending your elbows. Now let's just do it in this position, you know? Um, but yeah, I think it's just, it's a tough balance. Yeah, totally. And, and it sounds like, I mean, that's, you know, in a short sentence, that's just reminding them of the process rather than the result. And, and that's it. It's such a cool way to lay out a practice is, if we have a setting practice and we don't hit, obviously we'd love to have perfect sets happen throughout the process. But even, even if we don't have a perfectly targeted set in a practice, but they made progress in the process of creating that perfect set for themselves, then that's an awesome practice and they enjoy mm -hmm. doing. Um, so I, I love that you stress that. Um, and, and is there, Anything else that you'd like to add on top of that uh, before we let Josh and Nicole ask questions or even if Maureen thought of some extra questions, um, like anything that may, if you, I always like to ask if you leave this meeting and you're like, I want them to hear, if they heard anything, I want them to hear this uh, and take it with them. What would that be before we open it up to Q&A? Um, I, I would say if, like failing is a good thing. You know, like I, I think um, one, this sport is full of failure. It is one of the most unforgiving sports in that atmosphere because every single tournament you play, you might get some wins, but most of the time it's finishing with a loss, you know, and it's, it's really, really tough to come away with a positive spin on things because you can have your best, your best finish of your life but you're probably still walking away losing. Um, obviously, there are a lot of people that are winning tournaments, which is great. Those people are phenomenal, right? I've played on the AVP for six years. My best finish is a seventh, <laughs> which means that I lost every tournament I played in. <laughs> you know? Um, and it's, it's kind of... it's it's tough because if you go into things and you're just thinking about pass or fail, or you're just thinking about wins and losses or doing things right or wrong, um, then it can be super frustrating sport. But if you open yourself up to like going to practice and like one of the ways I know that my maturity changed is when I would go, I, when I would be talking to Mark or something after a practice and I would, when I first moved out to California, I would be like, oh yeah, today we played against this guy and this guy and we beat them. I'd be like, yeah, they, they had no shot, you know? And then I realized that I was still not beating any of those guys in tournaments. And then I, would a couple years later, be like, hey, somebody would ask me, hey, how's practice going? And I'd be like, today was great. I really locked in my cut shot. I really felt like I was t contacting the ball at the highest point. And they're like, oh, well, did, like, did you guys compete? How, how many drills did you win? I'd be like, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no clue if I won a single drill, um, but I felt like I walked away getting better. And I, that's, I, you have to get into that mindset. I, I do think that the wins follow that. Like if you're able to go into it and 
really focus on winning or sorry, not focus on winning, focus on improving, then the wins, they come, you know, mm-hmm. but as far as the longevity of the sport, as far as being a somewhat enjoyable human being when you're on the court as well, um, just being willing to put your ego aside and say like, Hey, Hey, I'm, I'm going to try to get better at this. Even if it means I lose a lot of points, at least I'm going to be able to say I got better at it. Hmm. I love that. Failing forward. Failing yeah. forward. I like, yeah, it's a good one. Great. Well, great. Also, thank you, Brandon. Um, yeah. Nicole, Josh, Marine, if you guys have any extra questions that you'd love to hear from Coach Brandon about, uh, now's the time. Feel free to speak up, unmute yourself, and uh, ask him whatever you want to know. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. I thought Josh was going to unmute, but yeah. Brendan, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm ready to be your team. <laughs> hey, I like I like that. The up and up and coming team. I would be happy to coach you guys. Yeah. yeah heck, heck of a season. Yeah. But I, I totally relate to that because, like, I did have a good season, but I still did not win any tournaments. I qualified to all mm-hmm. of them, but... Which which is, is a that, huge milestone. Which is a win, you know? yeah, it's, for sure. It's amazing. Um, for sure, for sure. But, yeah, I think but it's, it's, like, like, it's still, like, a, a bittersweet feeling. It's, like, 100%. okay, I had, like, one main draw win, so <laughs> what is my next one? <laughs> yeah, right. But, yeah, and I think just managing your expectations too you know i think Mm -hmm. like especially someone that's younger getting into the sport um like your mentality on on how your finishes are should be completely different than mine oh yeah you know like you you should be in a position where you i like you should be celebrating your qualifications and getting a win in the main draw for the next until the next tournament happens Mm -hmm. you know um and then as you kind of continue on your career then those expectations kind of kind of keep growing so like next year if you qualified for two tournaments this year next year you should try to qualify for three um and those are wins like those are great so Mm -hmm. yeah i don't want every i don't want people to think that uh they should be jaded by any means you know like um winning is still fun and like accomplishing goals is phenomenal but you just have Mm -hmm. to make sure that those goals are established yeah 100 percent. and that's where a coach comes in so i'll see on this i'll see on the sand (laughs) (laughs) um i have a quick little uh so something that i've kind of been doing if you josh did you have a question nicole did you have a question okay one thing that i want you guys to do is i want you to and Matt and Maureen, you guys can do this as well. I want you to write down three things of why you coach. So just take a second and just write down three things of why you coach. So for me, like if you guys, uh, just for the sake of examples, um, I did this last week. And one of my reasons was to give back to a community that has given so much to me. Um, Another one was I I really enjoy working with people and seeing them improve. And then another one was it's fun. So um, if you guys want to take a second and write down your three. I already know my three. Write, Write them down, Poppy. (laughs) and so i think that this is a really cool um exercise especially for coaches because it this is this is going to be so eventually what you want to do is you want to narrow these down so if they're three this week, next week, maybe they're two. The following week, maybe it's just one. The following week after that, maybe it's just three words. But 
having something that you can come back to of why you're doing something is really, really important. And it's really, really impactful on, on who you are as a person and how you're leading things, you know? So for, for my three right now, they're kind of all over the place. Like they're very different, right? So I'm in the middle of kind of shrinking down my whys of being able to focus on one specific thing that I can always come back to, you know? And so I don't, I don't need to know what they are. Um, if you guys want to share them, you can, <laughs> um, and it doesn't always have to be an answer Marine. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta keep, you gotta let people, uh, you gotta let people figure out stuff on their own. Um, but, I, I think, and I have a feeling that most of the whys that people wrote down are probably very similar. Um, but if you ever, like, whenever you're showing up to practice, think about that why. Um, whenever you're in the middle of a drill and maybe kids are goofing off or adults are, aren't listening the way that you think that they should, what's your why? You know, um, and I think being able to bounce back that we, we have it in the sport, right? We do these little mantras of like to bring us back. Um, but I think that's something that's really important for coaches as well. So um, Matt, maybe in the next couple of weeks, um, especially for the coach group, maybe we start establishing those whys, have them submit their whys and then start to work down on how we can make it more and more simple. But I think as far as today goes, just realizing that you have wise is really important. You know, um, whether it's showing up to this meeting or just being a part of this group, you know, the, the fact that people are in this group shows that they do care, they have wise. And now it's just, I think as long as you make that, that the backbone of your instruction and like the backbone of getting you to the courts, getting you to be the coach that you want to be, being able to lean on those whys and then really solidify what that why means to you, um, I think it can go a long way. Love that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Is there, let's see, is there anything else from Josh? Paul? Well, I, I have one thing and I'm going to, the main reason I'm doing this is brand. Cause I, that, that camp that I went to there in, was it 22? Mm -hmm. In St. Pete. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Him and I connected pretty well, I think anyway. And uh, just that whole week of being involved and kind of working with him and everybody else too. I mean, everybody mm -hmm. was awesome. Marine, you were awesome. Everybody was awesome over there. That's the main reason why I'm doing this and wanting to be part of the team. That's awesome, man. Yep, I agree. Yeah, it's like once you find that connection, um, it's hard to stop, hmm. right? It's uh, you feel like you're helping people, um, which for sure happened. Um, and then being able to kind of grow that and do it with more and more people is really important. It's so one of the, sorry, <clears throat> one of the main reasons, like a lot of people think I left teaching because I didn't like it. I love teaching. If I was still an eighth grade teacher, I would be extremely happy. I would, I would not be upset with my life at all, but I knew that I only got to influence 133 kids a year. And once I started realizing that this impact was something really cool, I decided to grow it into something where, all right, how can I influence 134? How can I do 135? And you just keep kind of trying to grow with that. We got a little lucky with Better at Beach where we got a YouTube channel and an Instagram that's around 100,000. So that number grew a little bit quicker than I was expecting, but the impact and being able to just like be a part of somebody's life and try to give back to people and help them feel that sense of accomplishment and like push is 
it's something that once you once you experience it, you can't really stop. You can't really like go back the other way and be like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm just I'm not going to help anymore. It's a it's it's a cool little experience. So happy to have you on board, Josh. It's, uh, it's cool to see that. Awesome. That's cool. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for your time, man. Thanks for jumping in here. Yeah, of uh, course. It's always a blast chatting with you and hanging out with you. So I know I got a lot out of it as a coach and a player. So I appreciate you. And I'm sure everybody else will too. So thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, yeah, I'm sure you guys will, especially now that we're getting to our fall season and I have a little bit more free time, you guys will probably be seeing some more of me on here. And um, yeah, we can always, always come with questions. Love answering questions. Yeah. So I love it. Yeah, Sweet. appreciate you guys.